All right, today I'm going to be running through how to create the files to cut out the chair and the cabinet. As you can see, I'm starting here in NanoCAD, which is just a drafting software, and I have all of my vectors created within this program. So the first step, I'm just going to save these vectors as a DXF, because that's the preferred file format I like to work with while working in BCARF or Aspire as well. So. All right, so once the DXF has been saved, I'm gonna open up an instance of Aspire. So again, everything I'm showing here today, the principles are gonna work with both Aspire or VCarve. Uh, both softwares will work. So I'm gonna go ahead and open an existing file and we're gonna open up that DXF that I just saved. So this is our DXF. When I open it up into VCarve, this is what we first see. So starting on the left-hand side here, I'm just going to tell it the size of our job. So what this is, this is just the size of the material that we're going to be working with. In our case, I have a four by eight sheet of material on the table. So I'm just going to be putting in the dimensions for a four by eight. And again, our material is 0 0.7 inches thick. So that is correct. And then the last thing I want to do, I just want to make sure that this use offset button is unchecked. As you can see right now, when the DXF was imported, it's using the origin from that DXF but I would like to use the origin within vCarve. So once this is all set up, I'm going to simply hit OK. And now I'm ready to start working within the file. So in our case, I have a DXF that was already created, so I was easily able to import my vectors. But if you would like to, you can also draw and create your own vectors within vCarve itself. So we have all the standard features for circles, squares, ellipses. Um, you can add your own text, everything like that. OK. So. Here are my vectors. As you can see, they're laid out in a nice, easy way to view them, but this isn't necessarily the most efficient way to cut it on the sheet. Luckily, Vectric software does have some nesting capabilities. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna input all of my tooling settings. So in this case, I know I'm gonna be using a 3 8 tool. So that will be my tool diameter. And then I will have a clearance between my parts of 0 0.625 inches and a border gap of 3 quarters of an inch. Um, when looking at these parts here, I'm okay to have any of these parts rotated. So I'm going to have this box selected, and that way we'll be able to fit them in a much tighter fashion. Again, these parts are okay to be mirrored, and if because there's no parts that are going to fit inside each other, I'm just going to uncheck this allow parts inside other parts option. Okay, so for this chair, I need two of these main support pieces and then 16 of these slats. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. As you can see right now, I have each individual piece drawn out, but I can also do something a little fancy here. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete some of these slats. So because I know that I need 16 of these, I'm just gonna select down here, type in 16 and hit apply. So now a little number 16 has appeared over the slat. So when I start my nesting, it's going to build 16 of these shapes for me. All right. So now I'll highlight everything. And I'm going to hit preview. And when I hit preview, the software is going to go through and it's going to find the best possible nest for these shapes. All right. And just like that, there we have it. So this is how the software predicted. This is the best way that we can use all of our material and cut all these shapes. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna click okay. And now we're done playing with the vectors. We have all the shapes that we wanna cut. They're laid out in a fashion that we know is gonna work on the machine. So all we have to do now is actually tell the machine what we want to cut. In this case, for this file, it's quite a simple file. It's all just inner and outside profiles. And, excuse me, all of them are gonna be complete through cuts. So that makes it nice and easy. So I'm going to come over here to my profiling toolpath, select this option. I'm going to select all of my different vectors. And now I'm ready to begin the toolpath. So the first thing I want to do here is set my Z cut depth. So as I said, my material is 0 0.7 inches thick and I want to cut all the way through. So I'm going to put down 0 0.7 here. In this case, I like to go an extra couple of thousandths deeper that way I know that I'm clearing all the way through the material and then I'm just gonna be scoring my wasteboard a slight amount. That's why we have the wasteboard there. 
So it helps us to make sure that you're all the way through the material. Again, as I mentioned, we're going to be using a 3 8 bit. In this case, we're using a compression bit. So what a compression bit does is it helps when you're cutting through lots of different types of wood products. Um, so if you've ever cut wood on a table saw, you'll know that a lot of the times you'll get tear out as the saw blade is cutting through the material. And that happens when the direction of cut from the tool is forcing the fibers of the wood up through the material itself and it kind of splits at the top or the bottom surface. What a compression bit does is the flutes are oriented in a way that my bottom surface, the wood is being forced up towards the middle of the material, and my top surface, the wood is being forced down towards the middle of the material. So what that does is, as the wood's cutting, the top and bottom surfaces are being pushed together, and that prevents any tear out from happening. So that'll work with plywoods, um, any solid wood, as well as any laminate materials. So you'll see today we're cutting plywood and melamine. I'll be using the compression bit for both of those options there. So I have my 3 8 tool selected. I'm happy with that. In this case, I want to make sure we're cutting on the outside of all these profiles. I'm going to be hitting the outside option. This here is the tabs option. So tabs are helpful for when you're cutting small parts, um, which the vacuum table can't hold. Of course, if a part's too small, there's not that much surface area, so there's not that much for the vacuum table to grab onto. In that case, you would come to here. I like to do long, very thin tabs. That way they're easy to snip off at the end. And you would simply come through and add tabs onto your workpiece this way. All right, as we move down, I'm gonna be adding a ramp to this toolpath. So I'll add a 20 degree ramp, I'm happy with that. And that just helps ensure that our tool life lasts a little bit longer. Um, one of the harder operations on a tool is actually plunging. Uh, one thing to mention that while using this compression tool, depending on your material, the ramp might have a little bit of tear out. So if your particular material has tear out as it's doing the ramp, you would just simply uncheck the ramp option here. We'll go through and name this profiles and hit calculate. This warning here is just what I mentioned earlier. My material is only 0.7 inches thick, but I'm going that extra five thousandths into my waste board. So it's just letting me know, hey, just in case you're cutting a little bit deeper than your material thickness is. In this case, I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. All right. So there we have it. The toolpathing is done. But one of my favorite features about Vectric software is the preview toolpaths option. So what the preview toolpaths option does is it allows me to see exactly what the machine is about to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and I'm going to preview all of my toolpaths. Now there we have it. So this shows me all of the different parts that are going to be cut out by the machine. And as I zoom in, you can see the one that I added the tabs on, that one feature, it's showing me that I have these little tabs attached and that's going to be attached to my material still. And there we have it. So that is the chair file created and finished. Okay, so the second file we're going to take a look at today is the file for our cabinet. Now I've gone ahead and I've done some of the tool pathing for the operations we've already seen, so I have all of my profiles and routing done for this here. But what I do want to show is just a couple of different features that this file will represent. Um, so if we take a look at the top here, I can click on this menu and it's going to show me all these different layers. So when you're creating these files, working with layers can be quite helpful because as the file becomes larger and more complex, like this file here, you can see with all of these different features on, it can become quite complicated to make sure you're selecting the right vectors for your tool path. So by putting your different parts into different layers, that helps quite a bit. Now, one of the features that makes the layers super powerful is that I don't actually need to go ahead and select each one of these little blue dots. Because to go around and select all those, that might take you quite a while. What I'm going to do, I know all those blue dots are a drill point. I'm going to go ahead to go to my drilling tool path. I'm going to select my depth. In this case, it's 0 0.433. I'm happy with that. And then I'm also going to select my tool. In this case, again, it's a five millimeter tool. And that's the selection I'd like. I'll just show you quickly. So when you're actually setting up your tool, you have a couple of different options here. You set your tool diameter, number of flutes, the maximum pass depth, your spindle speed, feed rates, and plunge rates. 
So all of those are set per individual tool. And again, I'm happy with that selection. And now, so typically this is the part where I go through and I'll select all of my different dots. Now, as you can see, that's quite difficult with all these vectors on the screen. So I can have, I have a couple of different options. The first thing I can do is turn off all of the extra vectors. Now you can see I'm just left with my blue dots and it's very easy for me to select all of them at once. Now the other option we could do is if you come down here to vector selection, you can see right now we're manual. But if I hit the selector options, I'm gonna come down here and click associate with toolpath. Now what this is going to do is this toolpath is gonna to be associated with a certain layer. So I can come over here, I can click on my drill five millimeters because that's the blue dots that I want to select. And I have now that I have that highlighted, when I come down, you can see it now says automatic, or before that said manual. So when I hit calculate, it goes through and it selects all of those blue dots for me automatically. You can see now in each one of those blue dots, we have our crosshair, which represents our drill point. So that's one of the very handy features when working with large files that will save you quite a bit of time rather than going through and selecting each dot individually. So one of the other things that I wanted to show is in the last example with the chair, all of our profile cuts were completely through cuts. We had no pockets or dados or anything like that. But of course, those features are easily done within vCarve. I'm going to highlight my little dados vector that I have here. You can see that all these little pieces, I want those to be pockets. So in that case, all we have to do is just set our cut depth to be the depth of the pocket that we're looking to cut. So now when I go ahead and I preview all my tool paths for this part, I'm gonna make sure all my tool paths are highlighted down here and then preview all tool paths. And there we have it. So now you can see all my perimeter cuts. These are the pockets we were just talking about as well as all of my different drill points there. So once we have all of our parts previewed, the final step is just simply saving as an NC file. So we're going to go ahead, highlight all of my tool paths, make sure they're all selected, and then we're going to hit save tool path. And we're happy to save it as this file name. Okay, so now that we have that file saved, the last step is going to be actually uploading it onto the machine so we can begin our cut. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my A2MC app manager. And the app that we're going to be working with right now is the file manager app. So I'll click on that. First thing that I ask you to do is input the IP of your machine. So in this case, I already have that set and I'm ready to connect to the machine. So file manager, this is the app that allows us to send files from our computer to the machine so that way they can actually be cut out. So looking at file manager, the box on the left here, as well as this middle box, these are all files that are saved with, within the computer itself. So this laptop that I'm working on, these are all the files on my laptop. These two boxes on the right hand side, these are all the files and folders that are on the machine itself. So it's really handy as you can see, on the machine you can create your own folder structure. So the way that we have it set up is that all of our different operators are gonna have their own folder and then we save all of our files within our own folders. That way it just keeps it nice and organized. Another way that some customers like to use this is they'll create a new file for each day. And that way, each day, their operators know exactly which cut files they have to get through. But in our case, I'm going to go ahead and open up that file that I have. All right, so here we go. Cabinets, Melamine, Eric's Edit. And I'm going to toss that into my folder. You can see now here it's showing up on the machine. And if I simply right click and select, this file is now loaded and ready to cut on the machine.
Excellent. So you see we're finished cutting the two jobs. We cut, again, three quarter inch ply, three quarter inch mel melamine. We made a small chair and a cabinet. All the pieces were held down with vacuum hold down, again, which makes a good, quick and easy transition from sheet to sheet. Similarly, you can see we have very little dust left on the table. We pride ourselves on our dust collection systems that we provide. They do an excellent job. You will get some dust. It doesn't pick up 100%, but it picks up, you know, the majority of the dust. So there's very little time spent cleaning up between sheets.